So the preparation for this trip, I guess, really started last year when we were in uh, Dr. Fabra's class. Um, I mean, we did the entire DNA sequencing process, you know, going from a random piece of meat to actually finding out what species it is. And so that has really prepared us because now that we're here, we're doing all these interviews with these, you know, uh, insanely smart people, uh, that their real problem is that they can't do the entire process. I had no way of preparing myself for the, like, I don't want to say spiritual, but actual emotional connection that we would have to real people on the trip. I'd heard about safaris and sort of just seeing wildlife out of a Land Rover, which is amazing, don't get me wrong, but actually being with those people was incredible. So I didn't think I would have a chance to do that. Without the animals, it wouldn't be Africa, because Africa to me is the last place of really having wildlife free to roam around in large spans of area. And it's not just like a zoo here or the wild animal park, which we're used to. It's a big open area for these animals to really uh, flourish and enjoy their lives. A lot of the time we could catch poachers and we could even have the meat right in front of us, but not be able to prove that it is from an endangered species. So the great thing about having a DNA laboratory is that poachers who are already convicted wouldn't be able to get off simply because of a lack of evidence. Poachers know they're very clever. When they kill, they slaughter, and take everything off, and they go with the meat. So when you catch the meat, it is very difficult to identify exactly what meat is. As I said earlier, it depends on the experience. We wish if we could have some more laboratories in some institutions or in in the region maybe even one. So without DNA, I don't see us succeeding in prosecution of wildlife cases in East Africa. Yeah.